Grade 6 Math number 1.9, Simplify Algebraic Expressions. Terms are part of an algebraic expression that are separated by a plus sign or a minus sign, an addition or subtraction sign. Like terms have the same variables, you know, the letters, and the same exponents. How many terms are there? Well, in this one, in this top one, there's three. They're separated by a plus or minus sign, so there's one, two, three terms. Separated by a plus or minus sign, there's only one plus sign, so there's one, two. See how this would have been multiplication when it's next to the parentheses? It means multiplication. Terms are only separated by a plus sign or a minus sign. Only. Multiplication and division don't count as separate terms. So, it's just one big term and another little term that makes two terms. One term, two terms, three terms. One term, two terms, three terms. Terms are only separated by a plus or a minus. Only. Multiplication and division don't count as separate terms. If anyone asks you, say no. Only plus or minus sign. Okay? If I said Emma had two dogs and four cats plus three dogs and five cats plus six more dogs, you would say, why are you talking crazy? Uh, why are you splitting them all up like that? That needs to be simplified. Well, our algebraic expression would be, if D is dogs and C is cats, 2D plus 4C plus 3D plus 5C plus 6D. Sounds silly, right? It's all mixed up. So let's simplify this statement and put all the dogs together and then put all the cats together so it's simpler. It's simplified, okay? So we're going to count all the dogs, all the Ds, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 is 11. Count all the cats. 4 and 5 is 9. So if I had said to you, Emma has 11 dogs and 9 cats, instead of saying, why are you talking crazy, you would have said, wow, that's a lot of animals. Now it's simplified to 9 cats and the 11 dogs, and we can say 11D plus 9C. We put the like terms together to simplify it, see? Well, terms may or may not have variables, you know, the letters. We can simplify them too the terms that don't have any variables. If we have 5 plus 2y plus 3, we've got 1, 2, 3 terms. The 2y is not a like term, but the 5 and 3 are. They're just separate numbers by themselves, so they're considered like terms. We could put them together and have 5 and 3 is 8, so we have 8 plus 2y. See, we simplified it. Well, terms may or may not have exponents, and we can simplify them too x squared plus 2y plus 3x squared is 1 terms, 2 terms, 3 terms. And x squared and x squared are the same, even if it's got a 3 in front of it, which it's called a coefficient, but we'll get into that later. So x squared and 3x squared are like terms. We can combine them, okay? Well, terms with different variables, letters, and different exponent numbers are not like terms a squared is not equal to a to the third power. And a to the second power is not equal to b to the second power. What if a was 2 and b was 9? That wouldn't be the same thing, right? They're different variables, so they represent different numbers. Well, look at the a squared is not equal to the a to the third. I know you're thinking, but they're both a and they both have exponents. Just, you know, it's the same thing. No, it's not because 2 to the second power is not the same thing as 2 to the third power. 2 to the second power is 2 times 2, that's 4. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. 4 and 8 aren't the same thing. So, just like these aren't the same thing, these aren't the same thing. You see it? Do you understand? They represent two complete different numbers. That could represent a 20, and that could represent 36 for all we know. Okay? We can use a model to simplify terms. If we've got 3x plus 2x plus 5, we can use models to make our x numbers. And we can have the 3 and the 2 and see that there's 5 altogether, so we have 5x plus 5. We can use properties to simplify them. We can turn it around with commutative, because commutative says it doesn't matter if you commute from home to school which way you go, because the commute's going to be the same distance. Okay, so it doesn't matter if we use 3 times x or x times 3, the commutative can let us turn it around, okay? 
So now we've got x times 3 plus x times 2 plus 5 instead of this way. And we can use the distributive property to rewrite it. See, it's opened up now, and we can put it back into its original form, you know, with distributive property this way as x times 3 plus 2. That way, we can do in the parentheses first and get the 5, and then we end up with x and 5 plus 5. See? We can use the commutative property of multiplication to rewrite it and turn it back around, because remember we use commutative to turn it around up here? Well, we could do it, use it to turn around again and say 5x plus 5. See? Well, we, this is the example number one in the book. We can combine like terms. Here's the model. We've got 7a, and we're going to take away 3a. It's going to leave 4a, right? Well, we've got 7a plus 6 minus 3a. So we use the commutative property of addition to rearrange the whole thing and put the a's together, all right? So we're going to take the 7a and we're going to put it in the back with the 3 and we're going to shove the 6 up forward. See that? Because we can do that with the commutative property. It says it doesn't matter if you're going forwards or backwards, all right? Then we can put parentheses around the group of like terms, the 7a and the 3a. And then we can combine those. 7a minus 3a is 4a. So now we've got 6 plus 4a. See? And we were able to simplify that one. Okay. What if we had two different expressions that we were trying to compare? So this is example number two in your book. If we were trying to compare this expression to this expression to see if they were equivalent. So this one's got one, two, three terms in it, and this one's got two terms in it, and we want to see if they're the same thing. So what we have to do is simplify this first expression to be able to compare it to this one. So we use the commutative property of addition to rewrite it, and we put the b in the back and, the, and this 2a squared into the middle. So now it looks like this, but we still have these in parentheses together. And we need to move it so that the like terms are together, so that these both of these 2a squareds are together. So we use the associative property of addition to group the like terms. 2a squared plus 2a squared is 4a squared plus the b. And now we compare it to the 4a squared plus b, and yeah, look, they're equivalent. See? Isn't that something? All right, well, what if we had 5a plus b? We know this means multiply, right? And then we have 5a plus b, and we know that that means multiply. So is it the same thing? So let's simplify the first expression to compare it to the second one. We'll use the distributive property, just like the mother bird feeding in her baby birds in the parentheses nest. Okay? So we're going to do 5a plus 5b. That's what we've got here, 5a plus 5b. We multiply inside the parentheses and get 5a plus 5b together. See? And now the other one is 5a plus b like this. Now, are they the same thing? No, they're actually not. Now, if you're still confused, what we can do is plug in numbers for the A and the B to help us, temporarily. So if this was your homework and it needed to just stay as A's and B's, what we can do is use scratch paper to plug in like small numbers like 2 and 3 to see if it's right and then pull them back out when, we're, when we have our finished answer. So let's try it. We're in doubt. Let's plug in 2 and 3 as A and B. So let's say that a is 2, b is 3. If it's in parentheses like this, see, like it was originally, that means 2 plus 3. So now we've got 2 plus 3 is 5, and on the outside we've got 5. So we did inside of here first. That gives us 5 times 5, which is 25. So now let's plug the 2 and 3 into this one. We put the 2 and 3 as a and b, but because there's no parentheses, that means 5 times 2 plus 3 doesn't it? 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. So are they equivalent? No. And see how plugging some little numbers in could help us? So if you get something like this on a test, and it asks you if the two are equivalent, try plugging little numbers in on your scratch paper, seeing what happens, seeing if they're equivalent, and then pull them back out and write your answer. Okay? That'll work. That'll help you solve it. All right? So now you know that there are plus signs and minus signs 
addition and subtraction signs in between terms and that multiplication and division don't count to separate terms. You know why something that is to the second power is not the same thing as to the third power and you know that we need to combine like terms so we don't have crazy mixed up statements and equations and expressions, right? And you know that we can use models and properties to simplify, okay? And I'll see you next video. Keep up the good work. You can do this. You're doing fine. Bye.